Well, good morning, Cowboy Church. Everybody made it to church on time, even with the time change. (laughs) Glad to see y'all. For those that I have not had the opportunity to meet personally, my name is Jan Pack, and my husband Jim and I have been um, attending here at the Cowboy Church for about three years. We uh, have had the privilege of knowing this fine gentleman and his wife for almost 30 years. If you guys will look in your Wrangler on the part that says prayer requests, there's a whole bunch of folks that need our prayer and we should be praying for them. You about three quarters of the way down, you'll see missionaries and you'll see a name, Bob and Linda Bates. Y'all get to get to put the face with the name today. Y'all get the privilege of meeting my friends of over three decades. Uh, Bob and Linda and Jim and I met when Bob was in seminary at Dallas Theological Seminary working on his uh, THM. And they were an integral part of the um, local church that we attended and uh, was blessed that God brought us together at that point in time because y'all are going to notice when Bob starts speaking that he doesn't have a South Texas accent. He has a Southern Australian accent because Bob is from Sydney, Australia. So I definitely believe in divine appointments and how God brings people into our lives for different periods, different times, for for different reasons. And I'm exceedingly grateful that um, God brought Bob and Linda into our lives and that we've stayed connected over all these years. And y'all be blessed to hear about the ministry that Bob and Linda have at Alaska Bible College. They're both professors there and they are equipping the next generation to go out into this dark world to win people over to the love of Jesus and to become brothers and sisters of ours. So I will hand it over to Bob. Uh, Before we go any further, I'd like my wife Linda to stand up. She is truly my better half. Well, as we say in Australia, my better half. I'll have to be careful because my accent has not left me, even though I've been in the States since 1990. I just can't shake it, so I just have to put up with it. Anyway, let's just go to the Lord in prayer and uh, let's uh, ask the Lord's blessing. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to talk about your work and your word, especially in Alaska. And Father, just pray that you'll guide us so that we can all understand our responsibility before you in whatever calling we have. Many here have a calling for this state, this city, this town, and others have a calling for other places. But Father, we just praise you that we're all part of the people of God, the, the body of Christ. And Father, I just pray that you look equip us and guide your servant this morning in the words he uses and the way he presents so that you get the glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I love the icon you have for the symbol for uh, the Erith County Cowboy Church. The cross there is central. I just love the way it's so prominent here. This is the ugliest symbol you could imagine of a, a horrible death on a cross. But that is the foolishness of God by which he displayed his wisdom, which is greater than our wisdom, because it is there that on the cross that he put his son and put on his son our sins, all of our sins, all the sins you've ever committed, all the ones you're yet to commit, are all put on Jesus Christ, and he bore them. And if we trust in that, if we trust in the Lord who took our our place, then we become children of God. Jesus Christ is our older brother, so to speak. And we are all other brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ and part of the family of God. So that is a tremendously powerful symbol of the central fact of the the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. And your symbol up there really contains it very well. Now the other symbol is of Alaska Bible College. And uh, this morning I want to talk about that, but I want to be an honest missionary. I don't want to paint you a glowing picture of what we've achieved, even though I'm impressed with what has happened. 
uh, really God gets the glory. But to be an honest Christian, I have to start with the bad news and show you what happened the way God resolved it. Uh, we go to the next slide, I think the third one that says, um, uh, well, this is a passage, let me go through this. This is a passage I'm based on. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what he, the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God, he made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. So we begin with our, our inadequacies, because we are going to, going to find that in our following our decision to trust in Jesus Christ, he is our saviour. That is the starting point. But as a saviour, he is now our Lord. And the word for Lord in the Greek and the New Testament is kurios, which was a title reserved for the emperor of Rome. So it was politically incorrect to say Jesus is Lord at that time. Very politically incorrect. But he is our Lord and he is our master. And in other words, he is our employer. He's an employer. He has a path he wants us to tread in service to him. God the Father has a plan for our lives, designed in the eternity past. And Jesus Christ now enables us to, to follow that path with the guidance of the Holy Spirit so we can follow our path of obedience. And the path of obedience for each one of us is different. Ours is in Alaska. Yours is here. But whatever it is, pray each day, Lord, show me today the path of obedience next day. Lord, show me today the path of obedience and be diligent to follow that and you'll see God using you to do amazing things. It begins with humility in prayer, asking God to lead us. Now we start with our inadequacy. If you go to the slide that shows, uh, uh, our next slide is one that um, Linda hates because <laughs> this is part of our Arctic training in Alaska. We had to go and go on this Arctic training exercise, and normally it's about uh, minus 20 or so, but this morning it was minus 40. And we didn't have the right clothes. So we rushed to the local thrift store, and we got, the clothes we got there were really cheap, about $1, and it shows. But the clothing there, uh, Linda found that jacket and this thing over her head, and when we walked out the door, she says, I'm not going to wear that. No, 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 no. Uh, we took about 30 steps. She said, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> because it's amazing what modest 40 feels to somebody who spent 10 years in Texas. Now we're in Alaska. It was a big difference. So we found a weakness in adjusting to the temperature. We didn't have the right clothes. And, of course, the way to dress in Alaska is to put on layer after layer after layer. If it gets warm, you just peel off a few layers, and that's how you adjust. But we adjust to that. But in the next slide, we find the picture of the Glen Allen campus where we were at that time. And that campus uh, gets very cold. Uh, in winter, it's been known to go down to minus 85. Now, what does minus 85 feel like? If you go to your refrigerator and open the freezer part of it, put your hand in there and feel the metal there, and imagine what it would be feel like if that was 120 degrees colder than that. That is minus 85, and it's very dangerous. You do not have any exposed skin at all. Uh, you've got to wrap your face up, wrap your skin. You don't breathe through your lips. You breathe through your clothing, so your clothing is up to here, and you're breathing through the uh, air worn by your jacket and so on. And we had to learn to do that. But that was a real uh, awakening for us because we are weak in handling that sort of environment. Uh, we're not sourdoughs yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> But in the in Alaska Bible College in Glen Allen, uh, the problem became bad in about the year 2011 when the cost of power to heat the buildings went up by 15%. The following year, another 20% on top of that. The following year, 25%. And now we began to realize if this continues, we're going to have to close the doors in six months. So a crisis was reached. Again, our inadequacy and how to work out what to do. We had an extension campus in, in Palmer, but the, we would have to buy that in order to go down there, and the down payment was $300,000. So 
We pray to the Lord, what can we do? do we, we don't want to shut, we would close our doors and to stop the students from coming here. But uh, that week, the president sat down on his desk and the morning mail came in and a check came in, which he didn't expect, which was a closing of a, uh, an inheritance that somebody had bequeathed the college and he opened it and looked at the check. He didn't expect it, $300,000. See, God coincides things which we can't see. He allows us to walk into a stressful situation constantly through our lives. We may think that now that we're Christian, now that we're going, starting on the right path, things are going to get brighter and easier and all that sort of stuff. You know, in many ways that's true. But God allows us to walk into stressful situations so he can show himself to us and so we can grow in our faith. The jobs he's got for us way down the line require more faith than what we begin with. A lot more faith. And so he has to grow our faith by allowing us to be stressed periodically by these things that hit us out of nowhere and saying, what do we do now? And we face that condition many times in Alaska. So anyway, God answered that problem by providing that money. And the next slide shows our campus in Alaska. That's it, the front of it there. The building is not much to look at, but the background is fine, so that's what you're seeing. It looks like a... Uh, uh, an old bank, which is really what it was, <laughs> uh, going back to the 1960s. But that's a beautiful place we've got there. It's close to all the other churches, so that meets lots of needs there. It's senior friendly, which I like, because it's nice and flat. You can walk around and look at the fantastic views and get some exercise. And that is uh, what the Lord gave us for the college. Now, when we got the announcement that we had to move, and we had to move very quickly, Within two weeks, we were going to go on furlough way back in 2014. And we had to decide on where to live. We only had one week to do it. Another inadequacy, another stressful situation. But the Lord showed us again uh, in that the sort of place he had for us. This next slide shows uh, our cabin. Uh, it looks like something out of a Christmas postcard. And it's a wonderful little place. It's extremely tiny. I don't know how many squares it is, but it's just a, a main living room, bedroom, kitchen, and that's about it. <laughs> but it's exactly what we needed for that environment to live there. We've got a great landlord, he's a believer, and he looks after us, so the Lord provided for us in that. So, again, a stressful situation after a stressful situation. It keeps us humble, and we have to be humble, so we pray, Lord, what is your solution? We do not rush ahead and try to add our brains to the situation, our expertise. We may have that, but don't go through that as a first resort. Go to prayer, first of all, and say, Lord, what do you have for us? Going back to our founder, uh, Vince Joy. Um, Vince Joy founded what became uh, known as the, in 1966, as Alaska Bible College. He intended it to be a place for ministry to the native population. However, uh, that is not what happened. The, the proportion of natives at Alaska Bible College has always been low, and students are mostly from the Alaska and the lower 48, mostly Caucasian. Uh, sometimes we have some internationals, but the reaching of the Alaskan natives, which was part of his vision, was never fully realized. And for a long time it was seen as being a kind of demerit for the college, not achieving its charter of reaching the native population. There was a resistance there. In fact, they had one student that was a native there, and she uh, was a brilliant student. She went through the four-year program, and she went back to her people. You know what they told her? You're white now. We don't need to listen to you. Anyway, she got a ministry. You never guess where the ministry was. Dallas, Texas. <laughs> so she came down here for about 20 years and ministered here in Dallas and she finally went back to her own people but now they accept her and she's playing a key role in the community in many different ways. So it was very disappointing that not being able to reach the Alaskans would be <coughs> an immediate benefit. However, since we've been down in Palmer, we make much more connections with uh, other institutions. The Kingdom Air Corps, 
which is basically an, an air service ministry providing flights for missionaries to get to the villages way out in the countryside. Uh, there's only basically three roads in Alaska. There's the Glen Highway, uh, Richardson Highway, and the, what's the other one? Yeah, that one. Okay, there's three main highways. <laughs> and uh, all the other roads are just trails. And it's very difficult to get to most of Alaska. Alaska might may be bigger than Texas, but the accessible part is much, much smaller. It's just a thin ribbon along the main highways going down the, the center. So having that uh, ministry to the uh, pilots and to the able to uh, get missionaries where they go is uh, a good thing. Also, interact is another way of equipping the ministries throughout Alaska with uh, people from the seminary. Uh, the idea is that faculty can be flown out to a village or to a, uh, a mission or a, a summer school camp or something way out in the remote part of Alaska and do ministry there. So that has been a tremendous answer to prayer. Now, the problem in Glenallen was also was that there wasn't much chance for this, our students to get expertise in ministry. They were being taught the Bible, which is great. But it's good to have some practical training to go along with that. And we had, could offer them so little. There's so few churches there that to have so many students with just one or two churches available, there wasn't enough to give them proper training. But now that we're in Palmer, we're surrounded by churches and they've discovered, hey, there is a Bible college in Alaska and it's in Palmer and all the churches are now knocking on the door. And the interesting thing is, if we see the next one, all these these students, this is a graduating class of two years ago and seven of the eight young men there before graduation were already pastors, already doing an internship in the churches surrounding that area. Now, I get phone calls from churches all over Alaska saying, can you please send us a, a pastor, uh, a graduate pastor, to serve our church out at Homer or Whittier or a Nome or some remote place like that? Uh, what's the other place I saw? It's, um, North Pole, which is not the, the North Pole, but it's a little town near Fairbanks, and a pastor from there. We need a pastor here. However, they're all taken up, so the church is being forced to offer internships during the summer to get a hold on some of our students to get them. So that, that's a good problem. But that is a solution to the, the sparsity, the uh, lack of opportunity we had for students uh, the way it was. Next slide shows uh, the road to Glen Allen. That's a long, long 158-mile ride from Anchorage mostly through just empty territory, the most glorious looking territory you can imagine. But uh, it's so remote, and the thing that goes with the remoteness in the Alaskan wilderness is danger. This next slide should show the danger sign in the middle of it, and that is another weakness which you have to reconcile with, that God is your protector. Uh, we found that uh, last November the 31st we had a, a, an earthquake of 7.1, and our bed was just in the morning with the bed being thrown up in the air and uh, Linda was saying, get down, get down, and everything was breaking around the house, but uh, we survived that. But uh, uh, that's the sort of thing you have to be prepared for. That was a one earthquake of 7.1, but since then we've had more than 4,000 aftershocks. So there's always a reminder that God's in control <laughs> about uh, things, so he, he, he keeps you vulnerable in that way. But along with the danger can be some uh, sad things. We've lost two professors to uh, accidents in ice. The next slide shows uh, Bob and Jane went, and Jane went and uh, got hit uh, with a, a loose rock in one of the expeditions to the college, and she suffered brain damage from which she continues to suffer, and they had to retire out of the ministry in the Alaska Bible College. We had another a professor who was uh, cleaning his chimney and stepped off his roof and that straight down on the, the ground. He also got severe brain damage, so we lost him as well. He was our Bible professor. So it's very dangerous there. The next slide should show one of our uh, road dangers, uh, the moose in front of there. That moose can get pretty high. Uh, a big one can be bigger than a, a, a garage door. They're so huge. And if you hit one of those, that's uh, not good. 
And as of 2014, before we left to go to Palmer, Linda and I were the only professors on campus who had not had a collision with a moose. The hard to see at night. The eyes don't reflect like, like most other animals. It's just a black shape. And once we almost had a collision with a moose, but it was moving in front of some reflectors along the side of the highway. I could see this twinkling. So that, that's a moose. And it's able to break in time. But without those reflectors, we would have been gone. So when you pray for Alaska Bible College, pray for our safety because we are very vulnerable in that. And we've lost people because of that. Every year we have broken bones because of people slipping on ice or things like that. And even in the missionaries, we lose a missionary family or a missionary about every 18 months because of the dangers here. The only way to get around is with these planes. And the most recent one was the son of the founder of Kingdom Air Corps. He was in a helicopter, a brand new helicopter going out, uh, trying out and to see how it would work and it went down and we lost him. So th this is a constant danger we're faced with, so that is a vulnerability which keeps us on our knees before the Lord. Another thing is, uh, next one is a bit embarrassing. You've got a, 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 the graduation regalia there and the question mark. The problem we had was aging faculty. <laughs> Getting old. We were surprised that we are now the senior professors of the college. But the problem is that there weren't any people to replace us. The next slide will show that the, our graduates are now going on to master's degrees and they're doing their internships at the uh, college teaching there. So now we're getting our students now becoming teachers to work alongside us. So the Lord is supplying there. The next slide shows the impact of our graduates. It's amazing the proportion of our students go into ministry. Very surprising. They come for a one-year degree, and they all, oh, we love this stuff. We'll make it a four-year degree. Next thing, they're going into full-time ministry. Next thing, they're going into missionary work. So about a third of our students are going into full-time ministry. That is very high for a Bible college, even though we're the smallest. Very high. And they're going as far away as Senegal in Africa. That's the top left couple there. Uh, down the bottom there, we have uh, Aviation Ground School at the college. And they, uh, um, we have quite a few students going from that into servicing uh, Kingdom Air Corps. In the middle there, we have a student who's a graduate, now at Dallas Seminary, and he's preparing to go to Minsk in Belarus, in the east uh, part of Europe. Down the bottom there, we have international students from Russia. They come there to go to Kingdom Air Corps to get better training in uh, uh, aircraft maintenance and flying and also get a degree in Bible so they can go back and minister to their people. At the top left, we find Linda with one of our taller ladies there, Miranda. Miranda and her son, um, uh, her husband brother, um, forgot his name. Anyway, they, this couple are going to Arabia, to Jordan, to do ministry. However, as it is the case with most missionaries, we are not exempt from illness, from accident, from injury, from things that can go wrong. Their first child has spina bifida, which means they'll have to stay in the United States for three or four years to monitor her growth so that things turn out. So pray for these people. They're, they're eager to get out and, out and follow the Lord's will and that. The guy, the funny looking guy at the bottom is the student I mentor. Uh, he's Anthony, and he is a, a strange guy, but got, he's a really gifted public speaker, amazing public speaker. And he's doing a mission trip right now in Dublin, Ireland. In Dublin, Ireland. So we're both in sort of Dublin in a, a sense there. But uh, these are the impact of our students. I want to finish off with the final verse. I mean, I'm going over one minute, I apologise. But this is important. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay, jars containing this great treasure. This make it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Please pray for Alaska Bible College. Let's close. Father, we praise you for the way that you bring glory out of ashes. 
Uh, and these clay pots can be used to show the treasure of we have in Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for keeping us humble through our weaknesses and through the stre- times of stress in our lives. So we learn to depend on you and so that you will give the glory. And Father, we just pray that you'll continue to give the glory in this church. We just praise you for their missionary involvement and let us pray for the Alaska Bible College. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cowboy Church, before you leave, I want to remind you, one of the things about our church that I'm most proud of is our missionary involvement. Um, Just a little over 20%, 20% of our undesignated offerings go out to other missions. This includes cooperative program giving. This includes some things local here in Stephenville. But it also includes being a part of what Bob and Linda are doing at the Alaska Bible College. So Cowboy Church, that's something to be proud of because it's impacting the world for the kingdom of God. Bob, if you would come up. Linda, there you are. Jan, Jim, if y'all would come up, take a moment before you leave to come by, shake their hand, uh, get up close to the Australian accent <laughs> and the Pennsylvanian accent. It's a mixed marriage. <laughs> Cowboy Church, God bless you.